taxes of those living in just one city, Nanjing. If the emerging China is going to work... China is in flux yet again. For years, the path to prosperity here seemed clear, with more freedom on the way as well. Yet nobody saw President Xi Jinping coming. This son of a revolutionary hero has taken a sword to the political elite, smashed dissent, and the economy is heading in a completely new direction. Many Chinese are now wondering just where their country is heading. How do you take the pulse of such a vast populous nation with its ever more powerful leader moulding it to his liking? We're going to try and do it through the experiences of those living in just one city, Nanjing. If the emerging China is going to work, it has to work here, in this growing, affluent, former capital, which has plenty of problems, but which could become the very model of a modern Chinese city. <laughs> 28-year-old Li Chunhua is the director of a non-government organization called the Green Stone Environmental Action Network. As well as educating people, her group pressures companies into reducing pollution. She says the heart of this reasonably wealthy East Coast city of 7 million has been cleaned up significantly in recent years. The old city wall has been preserved, and the green spaces here provide great relief from a bustling city. But you don't have to go far to see that environmental damage remains unrelenting in this part of China. Gongo 我们 watches Li Chunhua goes to take a sample from the wastewater of a chemical factory. She'll send this away for testing. This outfall is pouring directly into a creek, which joins China's most important river, the Yangtze. So you can get <笑>不是特别的危险
Once this group has identified a polluting factory, it takes the information to the streets to create public embarrassment for the company. This goes down well in a country with a high level of community anger about pollution. All around the globe, there are debates about how to tackle climate change. But in China, environmental impact is a much more immediate issue. When air pollution gets too bad, children don't go to school. People don't go outdoors because they're afraid of what they'll breathe. Then there's the soil and the rivers, which can be completely toxic. In fact, some think that environmental destruction is so extreme here that it could even be a greater existential threat to the Communist Party than the economy. From Nanjing's youthful optimism, we move to a darker past, more than seven decades ago. And those who survived the horrors of a time in this city, which still shapes relations between China and one of its largest trading partners. Xia Xu Chin was eight years old when the Japanese army descended on her city and carried out what would become known as the Rape of Nanking. According to some estimates, hundreds of thousands of people were murdered. There were 15 people at her house on the day the Japanese army came. Only Sha Shu Chin and her little sister were not killed. She was lucky to survive given her wounds. It's part of the Communist Party's narrative that its right to govern comes from the guerrilla war it fought against Japanese aggression during the time of Xi Jinping's father. For this reason, many China analysts think that it serves the party well to never really mend ties with Tokyo. There have been some small gestures from the current government, but President Xi's administration is all about projecting a tough approach to the region. Then again, given what happened here in 1937, you can also understand why it might be hard for some to accept that China and Japan could ever be friends. Since the war, Xia Xu Chin's been blessed with two daughters, a son, and grandchildren. She's become more forgiving. Yet China knows it has to move forward and to harness the considerable brain power here. Wang Jiping is chief executive officer of Archer Mind, a company that develops specialist software for mobile phones, tablet computers and the like. China is pinning great hopes on businesses like his. In recent decades, China's booming economy has been built on exports and cheap goods. Now the plan is to turn this model on its head 
out with the exports, in with domestic consumption, out with the clothes and toys, in with high-tech gadgets. This country still has a long way to go to overhaul its economy, but there are signs that it's starting to head in the direction that it wants to go. There's been alarm at the recent dramatic fall of the stock market here. Those who are most worried about China's economy point to real estate. Last year, sales went down by 8%, but investors continued to buy into property up by 10%. The likes of coal mining bosses need somewhere to park their money. They're pushing up prices without sufficient real demand. This is heading into property bubble territory. Then there's the debt of local governments as they roll out major infrastructure projects. In tablets, phones and cameras, policymakers see something bright emerging. Although this is still not a real high-tech powerhouse. Mr. Wang's company had 10 staff in 2006. Now they employ more than 2,000 people. But his ambition hasn't stopped there. In five years' time, he wants to be five times as big. What's more, the university students here think they can see whether Mr. Wong's of China are taking their country. In Nanjing, every year, another 50,000 major in IT. Wu Jingyan recently finished industrial design. This generation hasn't been through the hardships of their parents and grandparents, so the Communist Party faces quite a challenge satisfying them. Yet whatever else Xi Jinping does, his showpiece policy, a major anti-corruption drive, has struck a chord with young people. In this city alone, both the mayor and Communist Party General Secretary have been taken down by Xi Jinping's anti-corruption investigators. Plenty have cheered along, but some are more suspicious. As a former state prosecutor, Shen Liangqing has seen the widespread payment of bribes, the awarding of contracts to friends, the hiding of laundered money in the accounts of family members. He says corruption is everywhere within Chinese officialdom. What 
Shuangwei is a form of extrajudicial interrogation using sleep deprivation to extract confessions. Tai Mr. Shen says party investigators will hold a suspect for three to five days if they confess early, but it could be three to five months. Theoretically, it could be forever. He also says that any genuine campaign would put checks and balances in place, like a free press or independent courts. So what could be really going on here? So we Shen Liangqing worries that the anti-corruption drive is part of a Communist Party power play with President Xi Jinping promoting his allies. Others think positive change can come from the ground up. But Sun Lin is a former Chinese television journalist who now specializes in the experiences of dissidents. His walls are covered in the photographs of those he's interviewed for overseas websites. The interviewees with yellow ribbons on them are now in jail or some form of detention. Going into Sun Lin's house is like entering a secret bunker. In Xi Jinping's China, any activity which might be considered a potential threat to the power of the Communist Party has become increasingly dangerous. And that especially applies to activists, lawyers and journalists. Wei. Wei. <laughs> Ta 嗯, He's been doing these underground reports since leaving formal journalism in 1996, and for this has spent four years in jail and multiple stints in labour camps for causing trouble. Ordinary people like Xu Zhuan, who believe they've been wronged by corrupt officials, find their way to Sun Lin. She says that developers have been trying to force her family and her neighbours out of their homes, and that she's been fighting back on their behalf. This house, they bought us for 4,000 
但是二零一一年的时候，我们周边的房子已经卖到两万多块钱一个平方，这个差距太大了。She says most of her neighbours have already caved in to the pressure to leave. In this former community, only eight families are still holding out for what they say is fair compensation. Xu Zhuan says paid thugs working with officials have been sent around to try and bully the remaining residents into leaving. She's seven months pregnant when we speak to her. 你不怕吗？你不怕那个，比如黑社会来这里让你们离开，还是这样的方法吗？我不怕，我不怕，因为我觉得我的要求不过分。嗯，如果说你你，因为我的要求是合理的，不过分，你动用黑社会，那只能显示你政府很无耻了。The problem of forced evictions is a huge one in China. We stumble across a protest outside a municipal government office in downtown Nanjing. As soon as we arrive, people who claim they've had their homes stolen are eager to speak. This woman proudly declares her name and address to the camera, despite police urging her to be quiet. They also have stories of violent evictions. The police bring out their own camera to capture us. But they're also interested in the demonstrators. The authorities film as those who've spoken out give their contact details. Police tell us to stop recording. The residents keep coming. Then plainclothes officials arrive. And familiar questions are asked. You get the feeling he's not used to justifying who he is. A call goes in to his superiors. We're told that we need to hear more than just one side to this story. The official gives us his contact details. But in the coming days, when we ask to interview a government representative, we're refused. Instead, we're told we'd be reported to the Australian Embassy. Right across China, residents have been forced out of their old homes and paid less than a tenth of their value. Developers, in collusion with officials, go on to build large tower blocks. Yet in modern China, some say it's getting harder to hide fraud in the real estate market, and many are hopeful the corrupt might be rounded up soon.
网络，每一个有海外关系的这些亲戚朋友。Sun Lin says he has a different view to those who think China is becoming less free under Xi Jinping. He points out that under the former administration, he was jailed. But that during President Xi's time, he's not been arrested. Although online censorship has been ramped up here, he and others have great faith in the long-term impact of the internet in China. From the freedom perspective, the Chinese won't be free, and the internet won't be free. This is a history of the internet. You can't turn the history of the internet back. Vast ship of the Chinese nation is certainly changing direction under Xi Jinping. Though people here may not know where it will end up, it is hard to knock the optimism out of them. Li Chunhua's group continue to operate, looking for new factories to clean up. Xia Xuqin still wants Japan to admit what happened here in World War II. Wang Jiping is looking to develop robots. He says they'll soon be serving humans every day. Wu Jingyan has found a new job. He's designing luggage and other bags. Shen Yangqing is unemployed. He says police harassed him when he tried to set up a business. He's surviving on money from his parents' pension. So Lin's interviews go on. And feature mainly on the Boshun website. And Xu Duan now has a baby boy. Definitely one of the new faces of China.